think we're up now. Um, I'll take a little bit of a different approach than we had in the last uh, presentation and talk more specifically about some things we've had in hurricanes and floods as we go through the uh, things we do here in Texas and, and how A&M has kind of been involved in that. We do have a fairly active um, emergency management uh, process here at the university level and coordinate with uh, our lead agency in the state, which is the Texas Animal Health Commission. So anything that's uh, dealing with animal issues, they are our lead agency and we work under that umbrella in several different capacities, but we're active at the state level, regional level, and also at the county level. Uh, we use, also use our Texas Forest Service. Uh, they are the lead agency on wildfires and wildlife services are very good at logistics and mapping and some other things Then our College of Veterinary Medicine has a triage and vet care component that also rolls out at the request of the Texas Animal Health Commission and other industry partners. Um, we have a very defined role within our emergency management plan and each one of them is, is laid out. Uh, this is all started after Hurricane Ike. Uh, there was a big response there, but um, it was pretty unorganized. And so we actually got together and all kind of figured out how we fit into this as we went through it. So at the um, animal issues, level the county extension agents uh, they all assist their county emergency management coordinators and establish a local animal issues committee and they write these county animal response plans that support the county government and usda activities at that level and they are every county is supposed to have one of these uh, animal issues committees put together and these animal response plans develop uh, and once again it's it varies a little bit across the state and how active those are, but that is one requirement we have. We also work in public information, of course, through the Texas Division of Emergency Management, another uh, part where we play in this. Uh, you know, we're not gonna talk a lot about drought issues uh, here uh, in this presentation. Uh, most of the activity has been around uh, floods and hurricanes and we could also bring in a blizzard we had uh, a couple of years ago that was really devastating some of our confined livestock operations up in our panhandle, but we won't focus on that today. But once again, like we all have very specific uh, duties within these state emergency plans. And one of it is a, the educational and communications aspect of this is one of our main uh, areas. Uh, we also kind of help manage and set up these livestock supply points or natural animal supply points because we have also companion animals there as well. But uh, we have what we call strike teams that go in the county extension agents to help run those on a rotational basis for these extended um, issues, particularly with flooding and, and the fire wildfires in the panhandle also had some of that. Uh, the Eden web, uh, Network, as pointed out earlier, is, is one of our valuable resources we use and in, in part of our emergency management plan here. But it's pretty active here in trying to provide information to uh, people that may be needing it, certainly from the point of preparedness, uh, mitigating damages from natural disasters. We don't do a lot of work in recovery. I mean, uh, response we do a lot of work in recovery we probably need to do more work on the other side of it in preparedness uh, than what we do seem like we're always responding to something uh, of course those are the ones we all talk about but that's kind of the way the efforts tend to show up huge response not a whole lot of effort in mitigation at the farm and local level sometimes but some on preparedness at the county levels and uh, certainly in areas where they have bigger issues. And our role is probably the least response we have is in that response mode and uh, going in during a disaster immediately following that. We do have a small component in that, but not much. And Eden is there you know, to provide that credible, reliable information. Uh, we've done a very good job of trying to change all of ours to where everything is mobile friendly. So when people are on the road trying to evacuate or respond, they can do so with a cell phone and not need a computer or anything else to access this information. Uh, originally, we were trying to disseminate 
printing material and that was not working so we've changed that mode of operation this is just an example one of the county's uh, emergency preparedness guide uh, particularly for hurricane along the coastal areas and if you'll notice their um, evacuation center is almost uh, 200 miles away or something like that um, from the coast but you have to realize that about 100 miles inland we're still at 70 to 80 feet above sea level so it takes a while to get high enough to be assured you're out of danger sometimes also a lot of information on evacuating livestock that was brought up in the last one evacuation is if possible is a great idea uh, we'll show in hurricane harvey that was very difficult i also try to talk about the supplies and everything else they need to bring one of the biggest issues we've always had is identifying loose livestock uh, a lot of animals do get loose regardless of what's been done uh, and then trying to get those back to the rightful owner so we put a lot of effort into trying to get it livestock identified and give us some ideas on how to do that uh, we also have some information on feed and water and what we need to have in these plans but we also develop some more specific materials for these livestock sh shelters i will talk about in a minute to calculate needs and for donations and that kind of stuff but also trying to address what's going to happen after a star storm and what's going to be needed and trying to get uh, particularly the large livestock gathered back up and and cared for even have a small part on youth livestock projects and some people try to take them with them and most recommendations are to leave them in place rather than trying to do that along with pets uh kind of covered this already but we these animal supply points uh, and like i said we all work under the state uh, animal response team led by the animal health commission and we do have some faculty member here in the department that can deploy with those uh, response teams as they go back in after a hurricane but our role is to kind of look up and see what the needs are and assess that and uh, try to get resources mobilized in that recovery mode uh, just a little bit on hurricane harvey because it was our latest one we dealt with uh, it was a huge issue uh, lasted a long time and created a lot more concern and problems than anything we've had up to this date but um, in that area where the hurricane hit this is what they were projecting it's somewhere around 22 inches of rain kind of in the epicenter of it well, it wound up in areas that had over 60 inches of rain, and so that kind of made it a little worse than what it originally was thought to be. 20 inches probably we could handle, but 60, not so much. So when that eye come on, headed towards some populated areas, it was kind of a, a scary sight for a lot of people. But actually, where the hurricane hit landfall was nothing more than a little bit of wind damage and four to six inches of rain for the most part so the flooding occurred all on the northeast side of that hurricane and because it lasted so long <clears throat> we talk about uh, relocating animals in a nat natural disaster but within this impact zone there was two and a half million head of cattle and where are you going to move them where are you going to evacuate them to people did move cattle to the highest point that ever needed uh, prior to harvey but most of those wound up underwater. A lot of our evacuation centers wound, wound up in uh, water as well, so we had to find new locations to, to take animals. Um, so it, it's very difficult to relocate uh, large numbers of animals. Like I said, wind damage was a big issue where it came on landfall and not a whole lot of livestock loss or mass mortality there. And there were some confined operations, but most of those did not have any great losses. Uh, so anytime that things were sheltered actually kind of made it even worse but of course the li large livestock and the cattle operations were where we saw the biggest issue and some of these cattle stayed in water for several days uh, we actually wound up with probably more issues in horses that stayed in the water three or four days than we did in the cows even though there were some concern with that uh, but like I said over 60 inches of rain in some areas I'm going to spend a lot of time on that but it was a large impact area uh, from Rockport where it first came on. You can see from this graph, very little rain actually hit at Rockport where it came in, but Rockport was almost destroyed by the, the wind that came in through this hurricane. Uh, but the flooding around Houston, that's 
course, an urban setting, but a lot of companion animals had to be moved. The Beaumont area, there's a large concentration of cattle over there. And the problem with Beaumont, it wound up, the moisture went up the uh, Sabine River on the east side of Texas, west side of Louisiana, and maintained that flooding for several days over there. So made it very difficult. Actually isolated several areas and evacuation and rescue centers there for both people and livestock for several days. These livestock supply points, uh, we do a lot of these uh, in response to fires or floods. Uh, working with Animal Health Commission, the Texas Department of Agriculture, Wildlife Service, and, cer and certainly all the industry organizations. And we try to coordinate some transportation companies and individuals that will move product. It's easy to get donations. It's hard to get them where they need to be, when they need to be there. But part of our role in this is to coordinate those donations and delivery across uh, areas. But we set up these supply points uh, somewhat pre-identified uh, prior to a storm and part of that emergency response plan. Uh, like I said, this time it didn't always work. Some of them wound up underwater and we had to move, but uh, sack feed, water troughs, all the things we think we will need. And that's for feeding animals within these evacuation centers. And then also for those that are relocated uh, later, but, uh, and also this feed can be mobilized and, and sent to the ranches. And we try not to bring it here if we can send it straight to a ranch or farm to uh, supply their needs. A lot, of, a lot of hay is donated and everybody's readily available to donate hay. They're not readily available to do this part of it, loading and unloading and hauling it. So it takes a lot of volunteers. We utilize a lot of youth as well. and. It, community volunteers to get this part of it done. And most of these are coordinated uh, through our county extension agents, uh, also role the Texas Animal Health Commission and Texas Department of Agriculture in these supply points. But we mobilize a lot of material when this happens and uh, trying to deal with it and not get so much in one area that we can't uh, get utilization of it is a big is issue. So logistics is one of those pieces we have to continually try to work on to to get that done. These evacuation uh, areas as well, there's a lot of missing livestock uh, show up here, unclaimed livestock. So there's a, this starts the process of trying to get those back to the rightful owners as well. And it's not just horses, it's anything they want to. Put one in wildfire just to remind everybody that we dealt with those quite a bit as well this past year. So we had the floods, wildfire, and blizzard the year before. But this was actually on one of the highest spots on this particular ranch, and they still wound up in four to five feet of water. The problem was we didn't have much dry ground to put feed on, even if we could move the animals. Uh, we still didn't have much of a spot to uh, get feed out to them. A lot of the hay you see setting around, and we made a lot of it last year, was full of fire ants, uh, and also had quite a bit of uh, alpha toxins and some other things in it before it was all over with, and chemical residues. Uh, from uh, the flooding that occurred along these areas. But anytime they could find a small spot of ground, they could get on it and we'd try to deliver feed to them. This is one ranch I dealt with in particular and they stuck four tractors before they finally gave up and went to these little airboats to deliver feed and you can only deliver 20 square bales at a time. And that was the only way we had to get feed to livestock for quite some time. Then we enlisted the National Guard and they would actually load these helicopters and go throw it out to livestock to feed them so they didn't starve to death before we could get to them. And uh, they did that until we wound up getting uh, bigger helicopters and we could roll these round bells in them and they were dumping round bells out. Uh, we finally did get some equipment so they didn't have to push them on there, but that was quite the side. And they maintained as soon as the human rescue component was over, they reassigned some of these Chinook helicopters to the animal uh, side of it. But up until then, it was all volunteer work, uh, getting feed distributed out to these stranded cattle. I mentioned the vet emergency team component. They go out and do a lot of triage as well. Uh, that's just a horse that's been in the water for several days and uh, some real issues occur from that. Following uh, this particular hurricane, we got thrown into another uh, area that we were not uh, prepared for, let's put to speak. 
uh, the governor tasked our chancellor of the AM system to a commission to rebuild Texas. And our chancellor said he, the only group he knew that had people in every county in the state was the extension service and the county extension agents. So they were tasked with the job of trying to get all of the needs for each county collected and brought forward to the state level to where they could start trying to get things fixed. And this wasn't just agriculture, this was infrastructure, you know, bridges, roads, buildings, whatever it was, all came through the county offices. So we've had a very different role in the follow-up to this one because of this component. Uh, and it will probably shape a little bit of how we respond in the future as well. Uh, but we are still using Eden uh, in this mode to try to uh, make some of this act accessible information as well, but most of that's going straight to the uh, governor's office and his designees there trying to deal with that. Uh, you can see in this, I love this uh, picture because we're dealing with a thousand year flood in most people's opinion. The only problem is we've dealt with, I think, a 200 year flood and a 500 year flood within the last 10 years in this same area. So it's kind of prone to have some issues here lately and uh, it was very taxing this time.